What is up, everybody? It is your boy Fry. Thank you once again for tuning into another video, man. Shout out notification squad. I hope you're having a great day. Definitely make sure to smash that like button as well as subscribe for the latest and greatest content, man. So pretty much today we're going to be covering a little baby Sumter Proof style vocal effect and we're going to be utilizing my new analog digital style workflow. So if you, you know, watching the channel for a long time, then this is definitely going to be an interesting video. Um, we're going to be using kind of a console channel strip. It's going to be fun. Just stick around for that, man. But if you're new to the channel, definitely check out my vocal recording course, vocal mixing course, as well as vocal enhancer. If you want to get a more in-depth look at a recording in FL Studio, B mixing in FL Studio, and if you're using an audio interface, my vocal enhance is definitely great for adding that extra kind of 10%, 20%, 30% to your vocal sound just to make it sound bigger than life. So stick around, man. Let's get straight into the computer. Squad up. Before we start the video, I'd like to break down how vocals are recorded at professional studios. Firstly, we'll have a vocal booth or sound reflection free control room which we can record in. Engineers will choose a microphone which best suits the artist. For some strange reason, the Neumann U87 has become a popular choice despite the fact that many newer updated microphones surpass this mic in both frequency response and bang for buck. I'd recommend getting a warm audio clone. They've got a WA87 or even the um, 47 Junior, which sounds really great. But I can personally vouch for the SE microphones as I do own one as my secondary microphone. Your room, as I said, is more important though, so concentrate on that first. The microphone preamp is the next choice. Different microphone preamps will have a different style of saturation, which will kind of complement your microphone in a different type of way. For some reason, the Neve 1073 has become a long-standing popular choice despite many newer and updated versions being in the market. If you use an audio interface preamp, which all sound good but lack quote-unquote character, you can easily add a saturation plugin to your vocal chain to emulate an old school preamp. The template will have one, so check that out. From there on out, engineers may choose to mix the beaten vocals through a mixing board or remain in the box, which seems to be popular these days. And that's what we'll be looking into in this tutorial. So stick around, let's get it. Alrighty, now we're in the computer. It is time to take a listen to what we have right here. We've got the Sound to Prove Remix, and then I'll kind of break down my new format of mixing, which I think sounds a bit better in my opinion. I'm quite enjoying it. Also working this style uh, definitely reminds me of working on an analog mixing console. So it is definitely cool. Let's take a listen. Sorry, I told him I can't Heard you a rant, so you know what's gonna happen Whenever we catch you, I run with them shakes Run up a bag, go get a check BB they down when they shine on my neck Fuck at the job, I don't want a Rolex Ain't am no slip, so I want me a jet Woke up too early, yeah, I just be grinding Cop the new crib, same price of a tech Go get some money, teach you how to flex Start off with nothing, now you got finesse Hundred bands on my line, I can't watch TV Cooking that clean, yeah, just like a squeegee All about green, think I'm Luigi Squad too deep, man, we look like the army She wanna call me, bands all on me Double cup pulled up, I just say it's coffee Still gon' run it up, man, still gon' hit a lick Still gon' flip but he brings They don't wanna see us on TV Unless it's the news, I got something to prove Alright, so there you go. Now, obviously, we're not going to get it like 100% the same, but it is damn near close. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we do that. So, first things first, man, we need to look at what we actually have going on. We got a main vocal. Let's give that a different color as well. Let's give that like a nice darker blue. We got our main vocal. Then we got our ad lib. Okay, and then that's really all we're using in this track. Uh, Lil Baby, Gunna uh, are not really doing like crazy background vocals like uh, Young Thugwood, for example, right? All kind of part of that drip wave, let's call it for this uh, tutorial. But yeah, man, we got kind of our main vocal going on, got our ad-lib going on, and then I will show you how I process everything. So you can see I've got all these analog meters on the side here. What are they for? What are we doing with them? So what I tried, right, is I want to try analog gain staging within FL Studio. I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, so I tried that out and I realized that, damn, you get a lot more of a consistent kind of level going on within FL Studio. So what we'll do is let's just listen again, but then we will look at the meters and then see how they don't ever pass zero VU, but they hover close to it. The vocals are obviously going to be a little bit quieter, but uh, yeah. Run up a bag, go get a check BB they down when they shine on my neck Fuck at the job, I don't want a Rolex Ain't am no slip, so I want me a jet Woke up too early, yeah, I just be grinding Cop the new crib, same price if I take Go get some money, teach you how to flex Start off with nothing, now you got finesse Hundred bands on my line, I can't watch TV Cooking that clean, yeah, just like a squeegee All about green, think I'm Luigi Squad too deep, man, we look like the army so as you can see right here, man, we've got VU ballistics going on. Now, what does that mean is when we have this thing here called reference level, it basically means that it is going to look for whatever decibels is going on. It, you want to aim for zero VU. Now, why would we do that? 
um it's not really too important why we do that but we you basically just want to have everything hitting all the plugins that we're going to be using at a reasonable level okay so once we've done that and that also gives you who might use this template a reference on how loud you want everything to be so you can get a consistent result all the time that's what we'd be doing in the analog world okay we wouldn't want to be overloading tape and that kind of thing so now that we, we understand our levels we're going to start off with our, our auto tune okay this is the auto tune i'm using uh i'm just used to rapping like this so i just keep this on all the time not really too important for little baby style vocals you know he has a little bit of auto tune i would probably go for like 20 if you wanted the authentic little baby sound i wanted to go a bit more crazy obviously because uh, i treat these vocal effects as if it's a a remix or a collaboration you know what i mean so that way you know, I don't see any point in you copying an artist exactly. I just want to take the, the sonic signature and then enhance that, you know what I mean? And then be able to kind of break it down so that you can achieve good sounds. But anyway, so yeah, man, we do our auto-tune. We do a bit of noise gating because I have a computer in this room right now. So obviously, if you've got a fan going on, you want to use a noise gate just to get rid of any fan noise and that kind of thing. So this is where we start with our analog chain, okay, is now that we know what level we're using right i want to hit an analog compressor so i have two options that i like to use for my analog compressors and those are both going to be uad 1176s simply because i just like what they add to the vocal you know what i mean they just add a really nice kind of subtle sound to the, the vocal or well, not so much subtle quite aggressive sound so you want to pull up any sort of 1176 style plugin that you'd like uh, you could also use the leveling tool right here this is the uh, adhd for free you know leveling tool right here this is pretty cool there are also some really nice things uh from uh the modern series now i'm obviously not using that as an example because uh those aren't available for mac unfortunately but you want to be using some sort of analog style compressor so that you can really get your vocals to sound nice so if you just pay attention to how these vocals are hitting and just pay attention to any loud parts so grand cop the new cribs and price it protect go get some money teach you how to flex start off with nothing now you got finesse 100 bands on my line i can't watch tv cooking that clean act just like a squeegee all about green think i'm luigi squad too deep man we look like the army she wanna call me so as you can see right there when we had that loud part right there the compressor just kicked in okay i'm not using this compressor to do aggressive um compression at all times some songs sound really good when the vocal is absolutely slammed but for this one we just want to tuck in away any parts that get too loud so uh, i'll play that again so it looks like and it just kind of tucks it back okay so that's what your compressor is really doing it's helping you achieve a more consistent overall vocal level because you know when you're rapping certain phrases and certain words you want to emphasize but you also don't want to overload your um uh, master bus section okay you want to keep that vocal consistent so this is the compressor i'm using quite like it you can use whatever you like that is an analog style plugin cla 76 is definitely delicious as well for getting a, a upfront vocal sound this is the blue face version revision a meaning it has a lot more distortion than the revision e version which is the black face version so you know uh both of them with the exact same settings will start will sound slightly different as you can see i've got pretty similar settings right here if we want to kind of just test which one sounds good just to see they will sound different in, in level as well so that's also something to it. so as you can hear that distortion is just not present you know what i mean so that's why the leveling tool is cool because it has um variable drive distortion and you could also use i'll leave some other things in there as well just so you can also get that kind of analog grittiness added to your vocals so yeah man that's pretty much it on our, our main vocal chain from there on out what we do is we send that to our actual chain okay and this is where we start doing our console analog emulation so what i decided to do was i really wanted i'll make a full video on this um but i i'm able to control the the console from here so i'm just going to mess around here so what i've done is we've got these two plugins right which both are on all of the important elements of our song right so we've got one on the vocal chain and one on the beat and what i'm able to do is i'm actually able to mess around with the for example the high pass filter let's see what we're doing right here so as you can see pay attention to the vocal chain plugin right there and you can see that i can actually mess around with you know where everything is and that allows me to create a rough mix so the only two plugins i'll have on will be these two plugins right with my auto tune and then maybe the compressor on the vocal and then i'll just start doing a nice rough mix and as you can see that's where i've got all my toning and all my eq going on so that's pretty cool as you can see i can also mess around with the um this door and messing thing up but as you can see i can mess around with the other one as well so that's just pretty cool but point is it allows me to really act like i'm mixing on a console and that's kind of what i've been aiming for because i believe that it gives me a really nice rough mix so what i can recommend you do if you pick up this template is to 
leave everything else off, right? Um, you, you get this template and then the, most of the plugins uh, I'll maybe leave off this time around. But regardless, if you're watching this video, you know what to do. And then just turn everything else off besides your compressor, besides the two Neves, right? Obviously, I'll find a replacement for these Neves because since, since this is UAD. And then I just want you to, to spend some time really just messing around with the Neve up until you get some sort of nice tone. And then from there on out, you start applying all the other effects and you're going to get a really cool vocal sound. So that's pretty much what I do. So on the, we'll leave the beat for later, but on the vocal, as you can see, this is our treble section right here. So since this is a new EQ, I will just break down um, what you want to do here. And this is what's happening. We're doing a, a, a boost, right? A 10K, okay? So that'll be right there, but it's a very subtle boost. It must be about two, three dBs, okay? And then we don't do anything over here. We do a, um, a slight cut at 560 I found in this track. I wanted to get rid of just a little bit of 560. And then we get rid of quite a lot of one, what does that say, 160 or 180 we get rid of, right? So we kind of do that. So similar to what I usually do on the SSL, okay? So really what we end up with is something like this, which is just a really nice little EQ going on. So something like that. That's really what's happening, okay? Sounding really cool. What I also do, which I want to bring up, is I am messing around with the, the, uh, the line inputs, right? And that's really where we're getting our leveling going on. As you can see, the main vocal is really soft. But that's only on the vocal chain, remember that. So what I'm aiming for here is, is minus zero or, or zero VU. Squad too deep when we look like the Arby's. You wanna call me, bands all on me, double cup. But then once I toned it into the Neve, I'm getting a nice result, okay? And you'll see on the master track, I'll leave a VU as well. And that's how you're kind of going to determine if your stuff is too loud. So yeah, man. That's pretty much what we're doing. So if I disable the, and then I'll just show you my kind of console style workflow. If I disable the, the vocal. You know what I mean? We get that really nice kind of thinned out vocal. And as you can see, I can actually bypass it, which is pretty cool. So just pay attention to right there. You know what I mean? I can also flip over to the other side and then bypass that one as well. So it's, it's really cool and convenient to be able to work like that. Definitely pick up like a Korg Nano Key if you want to learn how to do this cool kind of MIDI stuff. So yeah, man, that's pretty sick. So after that, man, what we do is we start doing our computer door stuff, so, right? We've done our console stuff. Imagine our stuff is going through a Neve console and then we hit the computer, we hit Pro Tools, whatever we hit, and this is where we can start doing our effects and that kind of thing. So if I was to bypass all of these effects, I wasn't listening to any of these effects while recording. So if you want to hear what I was listening to while recording, let's just, I don't think that was never on, yeah, so. So as you can see right there, we dropped the level quite a lot. And then with, without these plugins, the, the chain doesn't sound too powerful, right? The vocal doesn't sound too powerful. So once we bring in our Arvox, our Arvox is where we get a bit of our, our volume back. And that's kind of where we get this interesting volume going on. As you can see, I'm really, I'm really barely doing any sort of, um, actual compression we're just using it to get volume okay so from there on out what i do is i use the fruity pro q i mean the fab filter i say fruity but this is just an eq you could use any eq you could also use the waves so for the waves users this will be really nice vocal chain to own since you guys can actually use the ships eq over here so yeah man all i do is really minimal cuts if we hone in on there the most i'm doing is 7.4 db 7.5 db at 12k didn't like that frequency uh, just kind of cutting away frequencies I don't like, okay? This is really just, you know, finitely cutting away stuff I don't like. So, that's easy. What I do after that, then, if you want to listen to that. So, as you can see, it just kind of thins away some of the stuff right there. Jesus, delay is annoying. But yeah, man. <laughs> Uh, so there afterwards, man, what I do is a bit of uh, compression, okay? And that's where we really get our kind of gluing together of the vocal, okay? Really nice. So what we do after that, it's pretty simple, man. I do have a really long release time, the longest release time you can get, just so I can uh, really just allow that compressor to just kind of clamp down on anything that does get too loud. And we don't do anything more than about 3, 4 dB of compression. 
Uh, so yeah, that's what we do right there, man. And then we, we use a bit of C4, which is also adding some more glue effect to the vocal. So. And that just kind of adds this nice little kind of compression going on. We do a little bit of EQ with it, as you can see. I'm really just boosting that range right here, the top end, once we've compressed it, because we are compressing it a little bit more as well. And that just helps, you know, kill off some of the muddiness, kill off some of the harshness of the vocal, and just kind of massage it into the track. Uh, so yeah, man, after that, and that is a multiband compressor, by the way. So what we do right here is just a bit of, you can use any plugins ready, man, but I just wanted something to help smoothen out the vocals. So I've got this chorus going on right here. This is just the random chorus that I found. It's a free chorus. Unfortunately, it won't be available for Mac, but it doesn't matter because you can use a stock chorus. You can use the Waves Meta Flanger, whatever you want. Just another chorus effect on top of the flanger right here. And once we enable those, we just squad too deep and we look like the army. She wanna call me, bands all on me. Double cup pulled up, I just say it's coffee. Stick on running the man, stick on the lead. And to me, what that does is it just adds a little bit of kind of 3D depth to your, your track. So that's pretty much what I do right there, man. So that's pretty much a whole vocal chain. Um, you know, analog over here, and then we've got our digital over here. Okay, we do nothing on the vocal chain. I mean, on the old vocals right there. On the ad lib, I'm not doing any backgrounds this time, so we can just kind of kill those off. On the ad libs, I'm just using my ad lib chain, but this time I've added a, I think I added an R compressor right there, just to really squash down all of the ad libs. So, because you can see how the ad libs kind of jump around. So if we find this ad lib right here. Woo! You know, a little bit of a quaver woo right there, just to make the song more interesting. And as you can see, that's all we're doing. Some really major compression right there, man. Uh, for those who watch, you know, I've, I've done this a million times over. Reverb, EQ, or obviously auto-tune, um, you know, compression, Soundgadizer, just to sweeten things up and make it a bit more gooder, gooder, gooder I guess, whatever Soundgadizer. Flangus, and then a fully panomatic. And then I do a nice tip at 226, just to make sure the, the ad lib doesn't stick in with the track or with the main vocal. You don't want anything to clash. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all we do right there, man. Um, on the beat, I wasn't doing anything. Now, obviously, when you get beat remakes, there are going to be a few things that maybe might not sound too good. And this time around, this remake sounded really good. So all I did was do like a point, you know, 4 dB boost on 10K plus. Okay, so I did a little bit of a treble boost right there. And then what else I did was um, I took this SPL vitalizer right here and I used the stereo expander just to make the song a bit wider. You could obviously use the Waves S1 as well. So those are really nice options. So yeah, man, pretty much on the master track. You know, when it comes to making remixes of tracks, it is difficult to, to get the two songs to gel together in terms of mastering because you want to get the level as close as possible. You know what I mean? So that's why the characteristic will always be slightly different because you can't, you must understand that this track has been mastered. You know what I mean? And it's gone to YouTube. So, you know, you see when you get the beat remake it's a lot louder so you have to obviously do the gain staging right and then you also need to figure out a way to make sure that the song gels together because you can see right here whoever remade this beat did not do any compression on the master track which is fine because that allows you to do it right um so what i did to to kind of try and treat this issue was i added in a compressor and then this compressor kind of enables the whole master chain so i'll show you a little trick that you can do so as you can see right here while it's off so just watch it turn on so as you can see right there, this automation clip brings all three of these uh, plugins in. And what they all do is we've got a little bit of bus compression because I really want to glue the full mix together. Okay, so as you can see right there, we do a little bit of compression. Run up a bag, go get a check. BB, they dominate, shine on my neck. Fuck at their job, I don't want a Rolex. I am no slip, so I want me a jet. Woke up too early, yeah, I just be grinding. Cop the new cribs and... And as you can see, it's really just reacting to the 808 and just doing like, you know, 1 to 2 dB of compression. Oh, not even 2, my bad. Just like, you know, 0 0.5 to 1 dB of compression. Easy stuff. And then what we do is, man, this is a nice trick. Uh, since I got the isotope, is I actually recorded... um. Lil Baby's part of this song, right, as a reference. Okay, you can use the Ozone Match EQ for this. And then all I did was uh, apply my version, my mix. And as you can see, they're really very much similar, man. They, I'm not going to fight over the, the major differences. 
they're really small differences. The curve is pretty much the same. And all it's gonna do for me in this instance was it wanted to turn down the treble of the full mix. As you can see, the blue is, is, is our mix. And then the original one is right there. And I guess all of these differences are just in differences in the vocal tone right there, as you can see, all of that is ready vocal tones. And then I'm sure this is just the way that the, the person who remade the beat uh, had kind of boosted boosted the snare a little bit too much um, but everything else is really similar uh, so yeah it just helps eight percent really not much going on and yeah that's pretty much that and then what i use is the uad um oxford inflator you could use the waves l2 i just personally like using this uh, l2 is going to give you a great result uh, l1 maximizer is going to give you a result you could actually use a little bit of sound goodizer here as well but all this does is it adds in a little bit of a kind of bass boost a little bit of a treble shine onto the track and I also use it to get level. And then from there on out, what I use is the fruity limiter just to get the level kind of loud enough for you guys to listen to. So yeah, man, that's really it on this vocal effect. I'm quite happy with how this sounds. From now on here on out, I'm going to be applying this style for mixing. So sometimes you might see me using uh, an SSL instead of a Neve. I really wanted to try mixing on a Neve console per se, right? I kind of got it all set up here and it sounds pretty cool. In my opinion, I really like the way I can tone things since I am using a Neve preamp. Um, I will integrate some really cool things for you. I will set you up with a uh, analog chain with, with these spaces. I've left these three so that you can also set up your own uh, Neve chain, right? So, you know, for example, I'll set you up with that. We'll do some drive. I'll kind of character it the same, but yeah, man, hopefully you learned something and um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely check the links in the description. If you want to learn more, definitely check out my recording course, as I said, so you can learn how I actually record in FL Studio with a similar template. My template style is always the same. I just switch out the plugins and that kind of thing. So yeah, man, hope you learned something. Peace out.